Hello everybody and welcome back. We are still in that war with England and Thomon. We were able to sort of bypass the truce that we had with England that wasn't going to end until 1507 um, by attacking their ally Thomon. So now we're sort of getting the benefits of uh, going to war with England here um, by attacking their ally. And it looks like, okay, so we can still, we can get a new technology. But we're still ahead of time, so we don't need to worry about that. Troops, uh, troops have suffered casualties. We, yep, we expect that. We're at war. One thing that I completely forgot to do. <laughs> raise war taxes. So I don't know if we, have we ever hit this button at all? So you can spend military power to reduce the land maintenance. We've done this before. Yeah. Which gives us, it'll just make this number a lot bigger while we're at war. And usually it costs 50 military power, so it's usually not strictly worth it. Um, unless you'd rather convert military power to money, is basically what we're doing here. Except, we have one of these special uh, sort of augmentations that we've done uh, via um, the work that we've done during the Age of Discovery. It's allowed us to get these extra benefits, and one of them is improved war taxes. War taxes cost minus 100%, so they are free. They're free, so there's no reason not to hit this. So we've actually lost a good amount of money not hitting it, but it's okay. We can uh, we can continue onward. We will be fine either way. And, oh, that's right, we have all these... Wait a second, what's going on up in our territory? Why do we have Castile over here, and why do we have the Tunis? Why do we have the uh, North Africans up here? What the heck? Who's all at war with Castile? Who all is uh, Castile? <gasps> Castile's at war with the Ottomans. Uh-oh. For Castile. What we need is we need the Ottomans to actually, like, get boots on the ground. Because, yes, Castile is our ally. But, uh, currently, they have some land that we want. And I don't think the alliance is going to hold forever, so... But uh, there's really no. Let's get our cannons sort of grouped up here. We're gonna have to distribute them throughout the uh, throughout the uh, armies. So there's no way. There's no way that eleven thousand Nice troops are gonna do anything. But I'm surprised that the Ottomans aren't like doing more here. Although Naples is sieged. Some of the areas here are sieged. I'm a little surprised that... Here's the funny thing. Castile's going to war with Granada, right? They fully sieged Granada, but they still have a... Na they only have... They actually have a negative 5% um, war score. So they're actually losing the war. They are going to eventually win the war. But they're... they To, to really dominate the war, right? They're going to have to actually, like... To land troops in Tunis. They might even have to land troops in the in the Ottoman territory. We'll see. It's going to be a long one. They're not going to be done with that war anytime soon. So we might actually... I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking. Technically, this is all that's left. Okay, we're having a bit of a naval battle here with the Thomon ships that have been dislodged. Whoops. Okay. We can try to pursue, because there's a chance that we could actually capture them, right? Have we... I can't remember... Okay, we do have a naval doctrine set, and this is with the uh, Rule Britannia uh, DLC immersion pack, whatever they want to call it. So we went with the merchant fleet. That's that's probably the best one for us, because we're not really going to be doing too much naval combat. But Okay, so they're here. Alright, so what do we got here? We got 7,000. We need, what is it, 13,000 here? We need six more is what we need. That'll bring it back up to 18,000. Let's get all these troops down here. So the funny thing right now is...
Oh, they're actually going into our territory? Okay. Now let's just attack England here and be done with it. Nice, Lubick has left the coalition. Good, good, good. Now we still haven't really played around to see whether or not... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. One thing we can do is we can look and see, okay, which... I'm just kind of glancing at this green bar here. Big green bar means there's loot to be had. Here it's empty. Here it's empty. So we can actually group all these guys up here. We got plenty of loot. We could just start looting. I mean, we could see, are we actually going to be making more money doing this? The Tyrone troops here. No big deal there. We go here, we look at our war exhaustion. It's basically zero. Not getting any significant negative modifiers there. You can invest in a new technology. Okay, so we can, it's saying that we can hit this for military. Again, we don't need to pay two years ahead of don't need to pay two years ahead of time. It's unnecessary. England and Thomon want to get out of this war, though. So we could start kind of poking around here. I'm kind of curious. Let's check on our conquistador. Make sure he's still exploring. Okay, he's still moving around. Sometimes I notice they get stuck. You got to kind of, like, get them going again. We're, we're looting this at two and a half ducats per month. Uh-oh. Uh, one of our leaders has has passed here and we definitely have the economy to be supporting one of these national manpower modifier reinforcement speed i'm not seeing anything here that's really like amazing so what we can do is again we can boot these guys out of here we can boot them out of here And next month we'll get we'll get new choices, get new people in the court to uh, to pick from. You get two ducats there. Uh, we're gonna take a ducat, one point two ducats there. Back next month we're gonna be making a lot from spoils of war. Funny thing is we're actually doing a little bit of uh, looting down here still. Play. There's 10 ducats worth there. Why not? Leader gained a new trait. Local ship repair. Is this an explorer? Who is this? Oh, he's an explorer. Okay. I guess... We're okay with that. I mean, it's not... I don't think it's going to be incredibly important, but we're okay with it. Keeping an eye on the Rebel Uprising. It's 80% chance. I'm not too worried about it because we have troops right here. We have literally troops right here. We need to move down here, though. But that's empty now, so... I, sometimes it's a good idea not to devastate the lands that you're hoping to take. Like, if we take these four pieces of land, it'll be good not to devastate them. Let's get them over here. I don't know. Are we taking this too? All right, let's let's play around with the. Uh... Oh, nice! People are leaving the coalition in like in droves. Very good, very good. Now the question is, are they going to rejoin it here? Now you know if we if we take a bunch of land here, are they going to rejoin the coalition? No one's going to care. No one's going to care. Only nation that is going to care is someone that's already in the coalition. And I'm wondering if we let them leave it. Oh, look at that. There's so many negative modifiers here that... It's just, it is what it is there. But let's say, I don't know, maybe we have a claim over here on... Yeah, like this province is only adding two aggressive expansion. Yeah, no one, no one cares. Now, technically, if we did this as a separate piece, it'd be more expensive, right? We'd have to play. We'd have to pay the diplo. The aggressive expansion would actually be the same. Only difference, I think, is we're paying the diplo for that, right? 
Yeah, so by because we're doing a separate piece, we do have to pay diplomatic power to do this as a separate piece. Oh, here's the thing. Oh, we cannot take Calais. Eh. People are going to be really angry if we do take this. It will let us take this too, though. The only difference there is like three points of aggressive expansion. We don't have a claim on this, though. That's the problem. We don't even have a claim on this. We're not too... Does England even have much money? They do actually have a lot of money. So what would we rather have? The di diplomatic power that we're about to lose or the money? Well, we are working on diplomatic ideas. You know what? I think maybe this war... The only interesting thing is doing it this way. The only interesting thing is if we do it this way, take these two provinces for 18, we can keep the truce light and we can do that same trick again to attack England again in the, in the near future by keeping the truce. Yeah, I think, you know what, let's just pay the Diplo in this case. I'm kind of tempted to take Dublin as well, but we don't have a claim on it. I'm kind of bummed out that we... Uh, we did that instead of Calais. Uh, it's like we need to take Calais at some point. Oh. Well, maybe we just take it instead of Oxford. No one's going to care. Yeah, let's just take it instead of Oxford. Take all their money. Would we rather take the war reps or take a bunch of their money? I'm not, I'm actually not sure. Let's just take a bunch of their money. Because after this, I don't know if they're going to be making that much from war reps at all. But let, let's get Calais. It's it's over here. These people are a little bit more antsy about us taking Calais for some reason. So let's just get it done now. And then in the next war, we can gobble up the rest of this pretty, pretty easily, I suspect. We're doing the separate piece for England. We're playing the 80 diplomatic power to do this. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All things considered. We could have kept looting them for a bit, but, you know. That's right, this is costing us admin, of course, to core these new provinces. And here's the funny thing, too. We got all the ones that we had claims on, except for Oxford. And now we only have one claim on England. So then it's now cheaper to make more claims with the spy network. So we're not quite at there. We need 25 for the next one, but we'll work on this for 25. Okay, so here's the funny thing. No one's going to care about this over here at all. Like, at all. I mean, the really weird thing is we could pretty much take, like, all of this, and, I mean, just no one, no one minds. But, like, the people in this part of Europe over here are barely being affected by this. That's the funny thing. You know, it's minus eight for Friesland, like, Friesland at minus eight, you know? Or Friesland. They're outraged with us. Hmm. Do we have claims on Scotland yet? We have one claim on Scotland. We need to keep working on that. And they're allied with Scotland. They're allied with Scotland. I don't know if we even... The funny thing... We could literally just take their entire country, but I don't think we need to. I think having them alive could be a good thing. But it might be kind of fun to take this province down here, though. Um, this will let us get claims on these other provinces here that we wouldn't get be able to get we wouldn't be able to get a claim on Orca Desmond if we just took um, this. Yeah, we can get claims on these through Tyrone. Yeah, so I think with this we'll be able to get, or actually Cork would actually maybe be better. Yeah, Cork's gonna actually be better. 
Kind of annoying though that it's not connected. Yeah, the fact it's not connected makes me change my mind. Never mind. This will be fine. We're not going to take their money or anything because we don't want to inflate the, the length of the truce. Again, because when this truce is over, they're still allied with England. We can just strike again. We can just strike again and use that as a way to attack England. So. so the rebellions are going to be... We actually have a good amount of rebellion just in general. Why is it saying Dutch? going on here overextension okay so we have overextension we're going to be taking care of that not a problem there's still some separatism there it's going away not a problem once that separatism is completely gone there'll be nothing to worry about lots of places would like to hire our, our troops as conduct tiari we can make money doing that but i don't think we we're doing fine it, it, i'm not sure we could try that at some point it's a it's a DLC feature, but we could try it at some point. See, here's the thing: if we have the fort up here, we, this fort I think in Picardy is actually going to be more uh, prime, better location, better location. Because this one, people could just walk around that one very easily, but they can't get through this one very easily because it does predict uh, or Valoe, Valoe, or whatever, however you'd say that in French. Like we can actually, if we go to our own fort map mode here, we can see that this connection is actually protecting this whole area. Protecting Paris specifically. We do, I mean, if we really cared, we have a we have a hole here. If we cared. I don't know if we care. Getting one of these two provinces, though, and having a fort in one of them would actually be really, really good. In fact, it looks like there's castles in both of these. Castile is probably paying a fortune. Paying a fortune for these forts, but, eh, you know, it's whatever. We still have diplomats that are working on outraged nations. Austria has left the, the coalition against us. Fantastic. Fantastic. How is Castile doing in their war? They are winning the war. They are now winning the war, but... What we'd really want to do... Is, like, get the Ottomans over here, like, if... If, if possible... We can actually give them military access. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's see if that gets them over here. Price of fish has gone down? Okay. I don't know if that bothers us too much. We even have much fish going on here. There's a little bit of fish down in Nice, but... I think we're bothered too much by that. Okay. Our forts are turned on. We don't need those on. In fact, we probably could have kept those off. We could have kept those off. Oh, well. We still made a lot of money. We're still making so much money from looting during that. We're fine. Um, why does this number seem a bit low? Oh, we need to actually get it. And we need to get another advisor. Okay, I like the, I like the uh, morale of armies guy here. Rile of armies is good. We can actually, let's just, let's spend the money to promote him to level two. Again, we have a really strong economy. We can pay for a level two advisor. I'm not worried about it. Let's see, are the, the estates, the estates. I think the clergy is saying they need more land, right? Yeah, the clergy needs more land. We can give them this province here. The humble province, but it has a good disproportion of, of base tax. I think they'll like this one. Um, if we go here, we can see we don't need that because we already have minus 100% chance of native um, uprising. Although, I wonder if having over 100% chance of native assimilation helps. I don't know. I wonder what's going to happen when our uh, provinces actually conclude what that native assimilation is actually going to be all about. We can't hit these buttons because they're on cooldown. However, we can hit some buttons. We can't get the call diet. 
and we don't have any other way to boost their loyalty so we can't really hit these buttons until the cold diet is back which is the primary way of getting their loyalty up so that you can then tank it by demanding stuff from them oh we definitely oh no 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 okay we want to hit this because this increases the global settler rate um how fast we build colonies problem is they're at 67 percent influence so if we give them this if we give them this they're going to be way too needy instead we can just ask for some money though that's fine they'll just pay us some money good chunk of money too big chunk of money one thing that we're kind of like eventually we'll probably want to give them uh control over london believe it or not Is that local trade power, trade efficiency, all these all these good things. But uh, if their influence is that high, we should wait until their influence is lower. Speaking of the estates, though, let's make sure that we don't have them working in provinces that make no sense. Center of trade. Center of trade. Estuary. So we have a couple centers of trade. We actually have a lot of centers of trade that don't have the uh, the merchants working there. That's fine. That's fine. As their influence goes down over time naturally through events and things like that, we'll, uh, we'll work on getting them into those provinces. People are leaving the coalition against us. Partly because at this point there's not enough people in the coalition to even justify its existence. But if we go to the map mode here... I mean, there's there's probably literally like... Yeah, there's, yeah, I was going to say, here they go. There's there's probably just a couple... Yeah, they can't. It, it can't sustain itself anymore. A coalition will only exist and form if the members, like, believe that it can it can actually result in a, in a coalition war. They're not just going to sit there um, if they don't think that the coalition is strong enough to do anything. So the, Austria left the coalition. It was weakened enough that they... Uh, they just wanted to get out of there. So one of the things that's kind of annoying is that there's three forts right here. If we go to war with Scotland, that's always going to be kind of a annoying. So it'd be probably good to get the claim here on West March that we can take the provinces that have forts so that subsequent wars against them are made easier because you don't have to resiege down. I don't like resieging down forts every single war. Grab the forts if you can. Oh, what's going on here? Brandenburg and Austria in an alliance. Munching down Bohemia. And uh, unfortunately, Switzerland's getting caught in the middle of it. Didn't we decide that we don't really need Switzerland as an alliance? Yeah, we've actually broken that alliance. Okay. We can lose military power or admin power. Well, we're actually ahead. We're more ahead on admin, which is rare, but we are. So let's do that. Get rid of the... Uh, The military. Or sorry, get rid of the admin power there. Wow, when we get some more ideas, we can actually get um, this idea, this unique French idea here to reduce technology costs by 10% for the rest of the game. All technology is by 10%. Wow. That is nuts. And yeah, we actually need to get to a new idea group, which we'll get at level 10. So not this one, but the one after this, we'll get another idea group that we can start working on. We haven't actually gotten an administrative idea group yet, so we might have to look at something in that category. Lithuania would like to be our ally. Does that mean Lithuania and Poland are no longer uh, buddies? Because usually there's sort of a personal union relation going on here. Poland actually would be our friend too. Lots of people would be our friend. Do we need an alliance? Is that why they're sending us the request? Because we don't have enough. To, we don't have enough diplomatic relations. Poland might be a good ally. Poland might be a good ally. Are they still good friends with Lithuania? They are. I don't know if I like uh, allying Lithuania because uh, Muscovy is, you know, is going to eyeball Lithuania here. I think I'm more likely to ally Poland. Um, that being said, it's kind of annoying. We don't need to ally Poland. That's the thing. We don't really need to ally these people. But I think Poland actually makes sense. 
The cool thing about if we give our alliance to somebody, the really neat thing about that, Poland might actually help us against uh, Denmark as well. The cool thing, the really cool thing about allying anybody in this game is, is someone that's this, that's gotten this powerful as we are as France. No one will want to declare war on them because that means that we'll be called in. So we like, yes, we have a lot of alliances and sometimes that's a problem because you get called into all these wars defensively and offensively. But in this case, no one messes with our allies because we're so strong. Let's get the royal marriage and seal the deal here. Okay, so we have a claim in Oxford. We also... You know, now I'm kind of thinking, what's what's the big rush? What's the rush with... Um... With Dublin, there's no rush at all. Let's um, let's grab this province here, actually. I claim it, and then I think we're gonna claim these provinces here on the coast. And just it'd be kind of nice to get their coastal territories at least, right? Kind of just maybe focus on the coast, coastal territories, which yeah, Dublin is. The nice thing about Dublin though is these provinces won't anger anybody, right? Because they're too far away. These areas could still potentially anger people, so it'd be good to just get them get them taken care of immediately okay so we have um a lot of extra cannons here in fact we now have sort of an odd number of cannons because we were potentially going to do yeah we built 10 and we have three are three standing armies right now Having some troops here is good, because there's a uh, rebellion going on here. Make sure we're drilling. Having some troops here is also good for the same reasoning. And then we can just have some troops. Let's let's actually you know let's actually move you over so that you're a little closer. The nice thing is these are all uh, grasslands or coastlands, so there's no defender bonus against the road. Like the rebels won't be uh, won't be an issue. We need to keep an eye on Tyrone because if they go to ninety percent, we need to cancel the drilling here and get our troops ready for that battle. Let's take up 3,000 cannons and group them into here. Our corruption is growing. Growing. That's okay. It's it's really not because we are rooting it out. We're spending money to root it out. So it's kind of staying even there. Okay. It's going to be 12,000 nobles rising up in Holland. We have time to shuttle these troops over. Okay. Let's get them there so that it'll be a little bit quicker to get them... Um, get the next 8,000. So by default, so what happens is, um, I believe, actually I'm not actually 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that the very first, the very first option in any event will fire automatically after the amount of time has passed, like a certain amount of time. And I don't know if it's one month or two months or exactly what. So in this specific case, because we're gonna be picking the top event, we don't have to pick it at all. We can literally just sit here and wait and really prepare ourselves for this. Um, let's make sure we have a good leader, our best leader here, which I think is going to be the 2-5 compared to the 4-3, because fire, or sorry, shock, I keep saying fire, but shock is really, really important. Really important. Um, what are we doing with these troops over here, though?
Actually, these are the ones that need to come over here. So we can just kind of chill out. With this event, the, f the top option will fire automatically if we do nothing. Now, in this case, we're already here, so there's no reason not to just hit it and get it out of here. But if we were still shuttling troops over there, we could take our time. Well, we'd want to do that as quickly as possible, but we would never have to worry about that uh, event triggering something else unintentionally. We actually don't have military access through Castile. Let's actually do that. I'm actually surprised. I'm actually really, really, really surprised that the Ottomans are doing nothing. Oh no. Oh, they have 12,000 troops, so where's the rest of them? Wait, what? Is Castile losing this war, potentially? The steel's retreating from a battle. What's happening? Are the Ottomans punching in through here? This could be interesting. And what we really want is we want this war to last a long time so that the war uh, exhaustion goes up and that the, the uh, unrest in these provinces go up because maybe we might have a situation where um, all of the original nations that were once here start popping up. Which would be good, because we'd rather not fight Castile, but we might have to fight... You know, we could just fight, you know, if... Uh, we can look here and see the cores. No Burgundy, or... Or uh, this would be Flanders. So, like, you know, if this if this rebels, there's a good chance that Flanders could pop up here. Only because the AI is really, really terrible about fighting rebels. Really, really terrible about it. Especially when the rebels would be not even connected to their main... Like main bit of territory not contiguously connected like in this case they're not gonna it still is not gonna be able to like get troops over across it well, i don't know maybe they improve things maybe i'm not giving giving the ai enough credit uh-oh uh-oh that's actually really annoying man that's incredibly annoying yeah so This guy's taking advantage of the fact. In England, so this guy attacked into Thomond. England didn't honor the call because they just got wrecked by us. Now they've broken their alliance with Thomond. And Thomond's probably not even going to exist in a few months because this nation's going to gobble them all up. Which is just kind of a, a nuisance because... Yeah, that's just kind of a, a bummer. It's, it's better to have a bunch of small, weaker little nations, a bunch of individual small, weak nations, than it is to... I think we've hit all the ones here that we really care about. Um, transfer subjects. I mean, this stuff doesn't... None of this stuff is applicable to us, really. Hit one of those buttons, because the icon told us we could. Okay, so the 253 is drilling. Let's make sure this guy's also drilling. We're not doing it just for him, and we're doing it so that these, um, the troops are, are, are training, right? They're getting, getting better, getting stronger. And I believe right, this increases our army professionalism, which is now at 30%. So at these different thresholds, we actually unlock some benefits. It's kind of cool. Okay, Tyrone is at 90%. They are at 90%. So we do need to move over here and get our morale back and just kind of like this is tricky we don't want them to pop right now because when we're on this province we're we're sort of you know we're subduing the rebellion itself now that we're off the province now there's a 7% chance that it could just they could show up. Okay, we're doing okay here. We're waiting for our morale to come back, so we're just kind of crossing our fingers here that... All right, here we go. Now it's on time. Um, January has just passed here, so we can hit these buttons here to increase our technology without paying a penalty. In fact, we're actually getting a bit of a bonus because our neighbors have already... They already paid the ahead of time. Wow, we only paid 400 military power to get a military technology because of, look at all those negative modifiers. Wow. 
crazy crazy so we need 499 to get the diplomatic but here's the funny thing here's the funny thing we might do this instead yeah we could just spend this and get another colonist which would be really really cool getting another colonist would be nice because then we can just colonize even faster Castile's working down here. It's not Portugal. It always I always think that that's Portugal and it's not. Okay, Castile's working down here. But here's the cool thing. We can't reach here until this col until these colonies are done. We still actually don't have the range to get to these areas over here. So we might as well keep working on these areas down here. The awesome thing is we cannot have rebellions. Because, we're f because of the French ideas and because of the policy that we took, we cannot actually have a rebellion. So we can send this thing, any we can send this colonist anywhere. Look at all these centers of trade. All these amazing centers of trade. We want to, we want them all. Oh, that was a center of trade down there. That sounds where, where are the centers of trade for this one? Not one here? Eh, let's not worry about it. So we'll start working on another uh, colony there. So we are actually working on two colonies, even with one colonist. The thing is, it's exponentially more expensive. Like if we look here, the colonial maintenance, we have two colonies, we have two colonists, so it's two ducats per colony. But if we were to actually start a third one, when this third one starts, it's going to charge us four ducats for the third one. And then the fourth one would be eight ducats and so on. It's going to be exponentially more expensive for every additional one. We're not going to do this quite yet. We are going to move these troops back over, though, and get ready for this uh, rebellion here. Actually, you know what? If they don't pop here... If they don't trigger there, let's do it. Let's actually trade these out. So what is it telling us we need to do? The infantry. This could be bad. This actually could be really bad. Let's move them off, actually. I changed my mind. Let's get them off here. Because we don't want them pot, because this reduces morale down to zero for the infantry only. Because we just upgraded the infantry. And also, it could be good actually having the rebellion spawn, because it'd be kind of annoying to have to sit here for a long period of time. So increasing, by moving them off, we increase the unrest rate to 6%. So that, more, like, we're encouraging them just to, if they're going to rebel, they might as well just rebel and be done with it. That's really interesting. The Ottomans... Oh, what just happened? The war ended and they still haven't actually taken Granada. Well, they took one, they took Gibraltar, but they didn't take this province. Castile is having a tough time of it. Now, it's, of course, Castile is doing really well that they have personal unions over Aragon and um, Naples, right? I'm surprised that. But they're really not actually doing that well. They, if they can't even take Granada, the, fir the first thing you do as, an, as a player is you take these three provinces, right? That's the first thing you do if you play Castile. As a player, you just take those provinces. But the AI is having a tricky time. I mean, the fact that Granada exists 50 years into the game, 70 years into the game most, is just crazy. Just crazy. We'll give Castile military access there. That's okay. Alrighty, so we're waiting for... A we got a bunch of rebellions on the way. Bunch of rebellions. Working on building spy networks. And we could actually attack Scotland. Pretty much any time. We're still making outraged nations. Uh-oh. Attacked by natives. 
Uh oh, our conquistador is dead. He did not find one of the cities of gold. So let's recruit a new guy to take his place. Wow, nice. Four five. Although he's got low maneuverability, which does uh, affect speed. So maneuverability is speed. Oh, and the morale is super low here because we just upgraded. And I forgot that would affect these guys too. Let's keep them going on the on the hunt for the for the seven cities of gold with the new guy. Okay, so we now have the third colony is in the works. The, the colonists made it over there. Takes a while for them to make it over there. So now it's costing us eight ducats, right? That third one is costing us 100% more. So the next one would be 200% more and so on and so forth. Well, just some unfortunate event. Province is going to produce less goods for a little while. It's okay. So we have one diplomat that's working on outraged nations. Um, two diplomats. That, we need to build a spy network over in... <laughs> I love how uh, Denmark... Remember how we said Denmark was our rival? Now we're too powerful, they can't rival us. Now they want to be our friend. Whoa! Livonian Order is actually like sieging down Stockholm for crying out loud. We can support the independence of Sweden. How cool would that be? So we need... We Let's do that. Let's do that. Like, actually, if we could do Norway, that'd be even better. No, Norway's at 0%. Yeah, let's do that. Is anybody already supporting your independence? No. So let's support the independence of Sweden. Eventually, this will call us into a war to attack, uh, you know, to fight for Sweden's independence against Denmark and Norway. And maybe even Denmark's allies. It's kind of unfortunate now that I think about it. But let's um, let's build the spy network in Denmark. Let's get some claims here because if we do really well in the war, Sweden might give us some land. Be nice. Does Sweden actually have. Oh, they actually think that all this to, like belongs to them. Hmm, okay, that's pretty aggressive, Sweden. Considering you're still under a personal union. That's some pretty aggressive painting of the map. Alright, so where are we at here? We're building the spy network in Denmark. Good. Very important. We need to think about... Castile. This is probably one of the best times to attack Castile. But we can't literally do it right now. I'm just kind of thinking, like... have they? Did that war actually weaken Castile significantly? They have no manpower. Kind of. I don't know. Like... We could beat Castile. There's no doubt about it. Do they even have any military ideas? They do not. So if they have no military ideas... Yep. I don't know. Castile might have to... We might have to break the alliance either with Castile or the Papal State or somebody. Somebody. Oh, you know what? Okay, last thing we're going to do before we end this episode. Thanks again, everybody, for hanging out. Um, let's boost our influence here. Let's spend this Papal Influence. Because I want to continue to be the carry controller. Let's get ourselves at the nice highest percentage chance here. 31%. Still not good, you know? We still, you know, 70% chance that it goes to somebody else. But, all right, so what are we going to do next time? What are we going to do next time? Potentially, we're probably going to be getting into a war for Sweden's independence at some point. At some point. We also are going to be attacking Scotland. Those are the two things that I think we're going to be doing in the immediate future, is attacking Scotland and continuing to take over more of the British Isles, becoming more powerful so that when we do go to war with Castile, it'll be pretty effortless. Um, the interesting thing about Castile is we kind of want land from all over, right? We want land from up here. We want land probably down here. We want land over here. I don't, I don't know. We want it all. We want it all. And we're also colonizing in the New World, which will be really fun because a couple of things are about to happen when these colonies finish which should be pretty exciting. So again, thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. I will see you guys on the next one.